quick video about Snap-on's lower end stuff In this case it's an Ethos Tech It's basically just an Ethos slash Ethos Plus in black with bi-directional controls on it If you've got an older Ethos, I don't know if it's worth talking to your Snap-on guy You maybe see if you'll change the software, firmware, whatever you need to change To get that extra functionality, um, it's worth an ask I don't really do anything since it's snap on, they just want, to, want you to trade it in, I'd imagine. Anyway, show you some stuff. We're in a 2004 Volvo D5. So, put some scanner. Oh, Volvo automatic ID. That's right. Basically, code scan scans all available modules for any code, so we'll go for that. There'll be a couple. There'll be one for the engine mounts. I think it's called engine pads in this software. Mostly because the electrical connectors unplugged because the front one's burst. Typical. So we'll try again. And it's just being awkward because it can. So we'll go down and teach one. There you go. Two codes. Um, but what's different for the usual stuff is you've got functional tests here, the actuator tests. So basically it just lets you bi-directionally control things like can you kill them? Don't know if you'll hear it. Can really hear it. I'm not going outside because it's raining. The joys of Scotland. Oh no, there we go. Can you hear that? So obviously, that's it's limited to what it can do. I mean, higher end stuff obviously has a lot more, just a lot more available tests really in your data. It's just the usual because it's a cheaper end tool. It's very slow to update. I'll just start it up. Or not, because when you connect, sometimes you get stuff like that. It says anti skid service required. What will happen is sometimes we'll just need to off and then back on, and it should go. Or not. Anyway, so there you go, you can see what you get. It's obviously sending a send, telling the engine mic it's only to be on, but it's not connected, so that's not going to happen. Finally. So, as like I said, it lags severely. 
doesn't update very quickly this. Obviously you can change how you sort it with these buttons, but the best thing to do is obviously if you go to that, the tick. This one is select all, so that's them all unticked. But what we back to that one, which is single, so you tick that. And if you just choose, well, do not four will do for this. That's four, but this also lets it updates a lot faster. Also because it's not having to deal with as much information. Let's see, see if you can. Obviously, that's a much quicker refresh rate. And also, if you change the graphs. So it's one graph per screen. One thing I do find annoying is if you look at the scales. No, it's not really easy to see in this one, but VNT regular is it 10 to 95. Sometimes that will be like 10 to 11, and you'll have a lot of movement in the graph, so you think a lot of stuff's happening, but it really isn't. So you just need to keep an eye on that to make sure that you're not imagining there's big changes when it's very minute changes, but it looks big in a graph. Yeah, so that's a custom data for that. Um, come back into this. Right, look, brakes. Obviously, functional test here. Special functions. Special functions could be good, obviously. This is saying sensor calibrations. Special functions also uh, cover injector coding. Which, for some reason, it doesn't seem to do in the Volvos, but it does it in Renaults and Peugeot's etc. Also it lets you reset the the Elios fluid and DPF fluid uh, systems. So obviously some of them have to be reset to say they've been they've been refilled. Even if they haven't been refilled a lot of people just like to reset them. Um, there's the actuator test for the ABS module. Obviously the other thing is, sometimes these things aren't act actually there, I mean AYC, that'll be active yaw control, which this vehicle doesn't have, it does have traction control and obviously ABS, but it's not got active yaw control but obviously, get our data basically it's the real speed sensors and then obviously your acceleration for your wheel speed, that's if you start wheel spinning. Supply voltage. Brake disc temperature, it's, it's a weird one. It seems to be on the Volvos, but I have no idea how they, they estimate it because there isn't actually any measurements available for like temperature on the discs, so it's, like I say, it's a strange one. Light like switch off, pressing the brake, it's on. And there's a pedal travel sensor. That's um, one of the things that goes fault in the servos and the Volvos quite a lot. It affects uh, your cruise control engagement, etc. Same with your clutch switch. But most of the time, this you don't, you're not really interested in it. So what I normally do with this is because often 
you get problems with uh, the wheel speed sensors, well, especially in the UK where we've got this glorious weather all the time and we've got a lot of salt and etc on the roads. So basically we just choose those or we'll choose these. That way we've got a graph for all all four road wheels. Basically for moving off, just want to make sure the speeds are all matching, in this case they are. What you normally find if there's something if the sensor's cracked, it will behave at lower speeds okay when driving. However, when you're pulling up to a stop, you'll find the ring spins on the shaft and it therefore brings up an issue with that and activates the ABS as you're pulling up to a stop, even though it shouldn't activate. But so, come back at this, see what else we've got. Service on the well, it doesn't really matter in this vehicle because it doesn't actually have an option on the, the dim. Functional test. Actuator test is normally just like needle sweep. There you go, like, you know, telltales for the lamps. And gong sound will go for that. Functions, test of indicators and lamps. Nothing exciting, just you know, better than better than a standard ethos, that's for sure. Anyway, well, that's just some help. Bye bye.